You're very welcome back. Now, battling cancer is traumatic enough without it being difficult to find a wig to suit you. For hairdresser Eric Keating, who lost both his mom and sister to cancer, helping people through a very difficult time in their lives has become a life goal. Now, I'm just going to explain to you, Caroline. Underneath, you have two little straps on each side, OK? OK. Now, I'm going to keep it loose while I'm trying it on. But if you want to tighten it, you just pull it. Like a bra a strap. A bra strap, exactly. <laughs> on each side, that's what you do. So it won't be flying off in the it wind, on me. They will not move. Mom of two, Caroline Normington, tries on a selection of wigs at Reputation's hair salon in Dunleary in County Dublin after going through chemotherapy and radiation treatment for breast cancer. Hi, Caroline, that looks really lovely on you. Very, very natural looking. And that's actually the one, definitely. And that's synthetic. Yeah. You'd never know. Yeah. You had long, tumbling curls. Long curls, no fringe. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a change, all right. What did it feel like to lose your hair? Um, well, I didn't lose it initially. Um, it kind of started to come out in strands after the second treatment, and then it was, it was coming out in lumps. Uh, but I ended up getting this kind of horrible matted mess at the back. And it was, as, it was almost as though the hair had just gone, gone to fuzz, almost. Um, so it all, all got matted at the back. So then um, I came here and, and we literally had to cut it quite close to my scalp and we buzzed the rest off. So it was pretty traumatic. There's a big box of Kleenex next to me so uh, and husband as well. So, um, yeah, it was a bit tra Yeah, it was traumatic. I won't lie and say it wasn't. It, it was, but in... Taking it, having it all taken off, you're almost taking a bit of the power back for yourself. Reputation's owner Eric Keating is sadly all too familiar with the wig process, having lost his mother Margaret and sister Marae to cancer in 2008. I had the experience of my own mother and my own sister going through breast cancer. Subsequently, having chemotherapy treatment, we had the experience of searching for uh, wigs. Um, to me, it was a totally different element of hairdressing I'd never seen before. But, you know, we decided then, looking at the, how necessary that service is and what, how important for a person's self-esteem, for a lady's self-esteem, to have a really nice wig and how uplifting it was for them in a very traumatic time in their lives. And you say you, you have a very strong emotional attachment to the women who come in here because, of course, they're so vulnerable when they come to you. Really, they are so vulnerable. Um, and a lot of people wouldn't be existing clients. They'd be total strangers. For them, coming into an environment that's not they're used to, they know, you know subsequently they're going to lose their hair down the road in two weeks' time. So for us, the reward is to reassure them that we will give them a product and a wig that would look really, really natural. Um, it'll only come second maybe to their own hair. And sometimes, inadvertently, it's actually a nicer style for them. Now, Philippa, you actually prefer this, don't you, I to do. your own hair? I do, I do actually, yes. I've always wanted my hair a bit like this, but because I've got very sort of thick hair, it won't sit properly. So, And also, I'm pretty useless at doing it myself. I like that you have the highlights without actually damaging yeah. your hair. That's I, great. I know, it's really, it's really instant sort of hair. It's great. You mm. are going through treatment for ovarian cancer. This is your um, second time getting yes, it. Yes, it is. Yeah, I had it three years ago as well. I actually have in spite of the fact that they thought I was going to lose my hair, I actually haven't lost my hair. So um, I had it cut when it got totally unmanageable and I looked really like a scarecrow and I, I lost all my self-confidence. I felt I just couldn't go out mm. and Anne cut it for me. So it's very tight into my head. Mm. But I just felt great once I had the wig, I didn't care. For Vivian Gleeson, this blow-dry is extra special, having ditched the wig one year after coming through cancer treatment. It actually grew back um, very white and very fuzzy and quite curly. Um, and the biggest thing I felt, I just I couldn't go out with it white, so I got some um, a rinse put through it. But now here I am. I got my highlights done about um, four or five weeks ago, and I just it is just wonderful to have hair again. It's not as long as I used to have it really, really long, um, but it's not quite as long, but it's just wonderful to have hair again. The average price of a wig is €550 Euro, and Eric hopes his service will help his clients feel and look better during a very scary time in their lives. You know, that place is just incredible. A small little salon, you'd never know really what's going on behind the doors. And just what a powerful bunch of women. And Eric is one sound guy.
But I mean, you need that because uh, my sister who died recently of cancer went through that and I remember going with her the first day she went to get a wig and we tried a number of places and she just had to walk out because she didn't feel that they were giving any kind of care or any kind of sympathy to them and I was just shocked by it. I like I I thought maybe just they felt that they're seeing it every day and it's like, Oh yeah, here's our brochure, look at that, look at that and but and she didn't feel that she was getting we did find a place in the end, but that that type of thing because they're going through such a hard time and so like, distressing. And she shaved her head and she did that so that step mm -hmm. and the oh, it's so so funny. She had her, her good wig, which was her going out wig, and her daytime one. Mm -hmm. And she loved them and it was like that lady just said there, yeah. it was like it was nearly just kept in place all the time and it looked brilliant and she felt a million dollars in it, which is so important. Especially going and I remember getting um, asking Gary Cavan, who's a friend of ours, to cut it for her and she was like, oh, Gary, doesn't he cut all the hairs of the stars? Imagine he's cutting my wig. But it's and that so was, that was It's so yeah. important Stepping for just for the, the yeah. world. It is so important. It was so important mm. for her, and literally. So I understand totally what they're going through there, and it's a it's a lovely place. And for himself to know how these people mm. are feeling, and for him to lose his mom and his sister. It's and what a lot of the women said as well. You know, putting on that wig when they could step out and not look sick. Yes. Because they didn't always want to be walking around mm. saying, "I'm sick." They want to look. Mm look like they're healthy and they look so real mm -hmm. that's the thing these days they you can like I, I'd, I'd see my sister in front of me walking down and I'm going your hair looks fabulous mm. like you look fabulous you look a million dollars yeah and that was all just the most important thing for them and so sometimes of course even better than than real yeah. hair yeah. that a lot of those wigs now were synthetic hair averaging around 550 mm. euro but the good thing about the synthetic hair is it's, it keeps its shape yeah so you can wash it just under the sink and off you go. It keeps its shape every day. Little tip, mm -hmm. um, don't use shampoo and it's seemingly um, things like washing up liquid is mm -hmm. better. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Honestly, because it's synthetic. <laughs> anyway.